What is up you guys? It is Monty and if I look crazy, it's probably because just woke up and we are what? It is Thursday, so we're two days out of the election. As of the time of filming, um, technically not a winner. Technically anything could happen. But this isn't that kind of channel. That's not why you clicked on this video. So we're not, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so that's where I'm at. But we are finally here. We are finally going to do the thing. And I am sitting down to film a discussion about, I guess it's called the Crave series. I need authors to get kind of creative with the titles. Um, I don't be liking when the, the series name is just the, the first book. But we're going to talk about Crave and Miss Crush. Don't you worry. Um, just, uh, my discussion of Crave will not feature spoilers because it's the first book in a series. As for Miss Crush over here, when we start talking spoilers, I'll let you know so you can, you know, skedaddle on out of here. Because I do think, um, oddly enough, that this series is worth at least checking out from your local library. Now, when I cross the bridge that some other people I've seen on the internet cross when discussing these books. When I say that Crave or Crush is like a feminist Twilight, no, I don't really know what they mean when they say it's like a feminist Twilight. Like, I don't, I don't know. So like, I'm not gonna say it, but if y'all want to use that language, um, I won't stop you. Um, I'm not going to police what other people are saying. I just won't use it. So Crave is the story of Grace, whose parents have just died, a la The Vampire Diaries. And she is sent to Alaska to live with her uncle and her cousin Macy at this boarding school her uncle is the headmaster of. And that's kind of, you know, where the plot takes off. You get, it's a paranormal romance. So like, you know... There are paranormal activities. This is being sold as a Twilight, so you know there are vampires. We have dead parents, like I said, all of the vampire diaries. So it definitely pulls a lot from pop culture. I think for me, Crave was just like an average read. Like she was cute, she was whatever. Like she showed up, she did what she needed to do. She hit all the beats that a paranormal romance was going to do. I think what didn't really hit it for me let me turn this down because this is bright and i just woke up that's up <laughs> um what didn't do for me is like all of my paranormal romance uh references are like literally from a decade ago like they are literally twilight which actually came out more than a decade ago that book is old as fuck so for those to be my reference points and i don't get it twisted. I understand that there is still a nice thriving market of adult paranormal romances out there. I don't read it. Um, I'm also not going to sit here and compare an adult work to a YA work in this genre, even though I'm sure there's some overlap. So for me, all of my reference points were like 10, 12 years ago. And so for me, for a book to remind me of something from 10, 12 years ago, and the only thing that Crave did differently was, like, update references, is it fair for me to be, like, two stars? I don't know. Other people look at a two star and, like, oh, that's a terrible rating, but for me, that means, like, a book was, like, it was okay. Like, it did what it needed to do. It had, for me, some slight pacing issues because Crave is, like, a literal two-week period. It's a very long look at Grace's first week at the school and then after the moment like after the climax like you kind of get a second week um it's weird though so like, I had some major pacing issues and I thought that it was a really odd choice to have such a truncated time because if you want to compare yourself to Twilight which I think that Crave has been successful enough in its own little time. It has a nice little cult fan base. I think we can kind of compare it to Twilight. I'm not going to be like, Crave is this like cultural revolution because outside of Miss J.K. Tro like Turfling over here, 
I think that Twilight did also motivate a large portion of the audience it was aimed at to read some books. Like, it also got out the reading. So, I don't know if Crave is doing all that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not that in tune with the audience out there. But we spent a significant portion of time with Miss Bella Swan. We got to see the better part of her school year that first year in Forks. We get to, I'm not gonna go on with the rest of the series, but in Twilight specifically, we spend a lot of time with Bella to see, you know, relationships form. And so for Crave to be like, we're gonna do kind of like a similar concept, but we're gonna make it like the first week in her. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the just the general rise that I've seen in this sort of space maybe it's because it's like a Sarah J Mass thing and I'm just getting into the Sarah J Mass world um but like this rise and like this mate's behavior in like young adult fiction where like before in this space I still think that the romance wasn't like mate driven like we were actually meant to believe that these characters who had lived for like a hundred years were really in love with the 17 year old girl and now it's like sure they like the 17 year old girl but we're gonna introduce like this mating concept for it to like I don't know to like it to for me it kind of feels like we're introducing it to bypass all of the actual development that we're gonna have with these characters because there's gonna be mates and then once they're mated or whatever we'll see the kind of scenes we should have gotten before they are mated and so Crave for me didn't really stick the landing because it just kind of felt very generic I felt that it, it had its own voice but at the same time it was kind of pulling from all of these other lovely moments in vampire pop culture which fine you can do that who am I to tell you how to write your story I'm just gonna tell you that I didn't appreciate the way you pulled all of these things together now let's talk about Miss Crush I saw them reading and like having like a, a midlife breakdown over this book and I was like there's no way that book can be that bad like it's it's a fucking vampire romance so do I think Cray do I think this book is that bad no I <laughs> I loved Crush. Like, and here, I think we need context. Uh, we need context. Do I think that, like, Crush is, like, the great American novel? Not at all. Would I nominate this to, like, win literary awards? No. But for me, the writing in Crush is exactly the same as it was in Crave. Now, did I have some issues? Yes. But I don't want to jump straight to the spoilers. Because even, <laughs> I thought I was going to, after the events of Miss Crave, I thought I was going to have some major issues with Crush, but I actually appreciated how we just kind of took a little, like we just jumped over the hurdle because what we would have gotten if we didn't jump over that hurdle, I think would have been terrible. I think that Crush moves the story into a place where it is its own thing it is like it's still pulling from other like you can still see where it pulled the inspiration and things but I think that it, the mix has finally like set up it's kind of like a chili you know the first day you make chili it's cute you know the spices are all there but the second day them spices be hidden differently and I think that Crush really benefited from a little bit of like it got time to set up I say that the book did come out really quick uh, I think there was what like three six months between the releases so Miss Wolf is she a speed little writer but I do think unlike everyone else who read this book that it had time to set up so I do recommend it like I said to at least get from the library but with that said we're gonna go into a little bit of, of crush spoilers because I think that I have to talk about some of these things uh, in order to fully defend the book um, but just to say some vague for a moment I do think that the fact of the the series is from a singular perspective um, 
and it is in first person, it allows for some of these issues to, to be resolved and I'm okay with them being resolved the way they were in a way I wouldn't be if it was written in like a third person. So that all out of the way, let's talk. I think that the first little thing we need to talk about is Flint Montgomery because I think that um, Flint Montgomery, the first book I was, I was very uncomfortable some of the time with the way that Miss Tracy was writing him. Um, maybe particularly because I had already watched some, you know, some reading sprints and I knew that Flynn Montgomery was going to come out as a queer character, he was going to be revealed to be gay, and I was just looking at him like, what is going on here? I also, like, there was some, like, supernatural racism going on with all these little factions, but I'm like, specifically, Flint is a black man. And some of the way y'all be bantering with this black man be rubbing my spirit the wrong way. So I was very uncomfortable with that. And then when I got to Crush and I actually got to read the scene reveal where he came out as gay, I did I see it coming? Yes, because again, I'd seen the reading sprints. But if I hadn't been reading the reading sprints, you know, in this reading sprints, I do think that if I'm, you know, reading the book from Grace's perspective and Grace perceives Jackson's actions, not Jackson, we're going to get to him in a moment, uh, but Flint's actions as flirting with her and she thinks she's flirting back and she thinks she's, you know, going to shoot her shot, I think that him coming out and her being like, what? Like, I think that that actually makes sense. Like, again, it's not like we had a multiple perspective situation going on here. We're in Grace's head. I'm, you know, perceiving the way the world the way she is. So for me, that wasn't a deal breaker. I was okay with it. And as for everything else that happened in Crush, I didn't think that it actually went against the way the world had been set up. Um, I also just really loved Hudson and Miss Grace. I am Team Hudson. They act, see that's why I really when I say that like the relationship doesn't get I mean I don't think the they kind of talked about mates for like three seconds in in Crave but they weren't talking about you know Jackson and Grace being mates but the Jackson and Grace didn't have moments in my opinion like Grace and Hudson had moments and the way that Miss Tracy Wolf was out here having me root for a love triangle involving two brothers she got a galaxy brain because I was I was here for the mess I was enjoying every second of it I even enjoyed the little quest because one of the things that Crave didn't have was a plot and the plot could have been Grace, you know, discovering the paranormal, but in this world, in this instance, I didn't think it actually made any fucking sense, because you take Grace, who is a human, and they just, like, plop her into, like, the middle of this little magical school, and they think they don't need to tell her anything, and then Grace is a fucking idiot, like, head empty, no thoughts, embodiment, because homeboy Jackson is like, yo, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. Um, pretty late into the game, like, you know, around page 200, maybe 250, I've made a little, uh, Goodreads update about it, he's like, yeah, I'm a vampire, and then, like, a hundred pages later, Grace is like, I think you're an alien, so, like, the, the way that Crave <laughs> played out, like, the entire plot, if you want to call it that, not only of, you know, Grace trying to be murdered to bring back Jackson's dead brother, that whole fuckery that was not really, it was kind of woven into the story, but not in any kind of meaningful way, in my opinion, and so the, the main plot becomes Grace uncovering the supernatural world, I think that could have been done a lot, I think that could have been integrated a lot better, and if it had been integrated a lot better than I think that the moments of uh her trying to weave in like maybe this Flint's trying to kill you someone's out to get you narrative might have like actually worked out might have actually gone somewhere maybe that's just me I don't know so that was that's where I was with Crave but Crush because we have an actual goal that we're working to I thought that Tracy Wolf was able to utilize 
the time better. I don't think that Crush has a, you know, a vastly longer uh, timeline than Crave did, but the events felt, um, they felt spaced out in a way that made sense. They felt like they were happening in an order that made sense. Because in Crave, you would have like these very detailed, jam-packed days. And I'm like, 12 things have happened to you and it's literally been not even a full 48 hours. Like, is some fuckery gonna happen at the little magic school? Almost absolutely. But sis, when are you going to class? Like, when, when are we doing that? And even in Crush, I was also like, ma'am, when are you going to class? Like, when are you going to get an education? You're talking about graduating, but it's like, I've seen you go to class five times and every time it's been art and every time you've been painting. I don't know. So for me, I almost wish that it hadn't been set at a school. Maybe that's just me. But again, it was cute or whatever. Like, again, in Crush, I was able to kind of overlooked that because we had a mission we were trying to get Hudson out of her body we were trying to like whoop, pluck him out and so for me I was invested in that narrative and I did I wasn't bothered by the idea of having to get these like little items for the ritual I also didn't think that it was um I didn't think that like the little sports tournament came out of nowhere because again it wasn't like Crave was this expansive look at Grace's life or even at Catmere Academy because again Sis was only there for a day like literally a week seven days Sis was there in conscious so the idea that she would know everything about this world and there would still be nothing for her to learn is silly to me like I also think that it's silly that in seven days, the reader reading through Grace, who we know is a dumb, had empty no thoughts embodiment, um, would understand the entire world or like what the rules are because the rules are definitely made up and the points certainly do not matter. And so for me, I didn't really think that Crush broke any of the rules that we had established. I think it established some stupid rules, like the whole mating situation. Again, I almost wish that it wasn't even a trope in this book, um, because I don't fully grasp the idea of like having more than one mate or a mating bond being broken and maybe you can find a new one, but these are also like people don't some people never find a mate so the like, it's like i wish that we just didn't have that i think of all the things that this book series introduced that was the stupidest and the way that it was resolved was also stupid and i do think that it kind of takes away some agency and i'm only okay with hudson and grace because we got to see them and their relationship actually move from what I wouldn't even call them enemies to lovers, it was like annoyed to lovers, and I liked seeing that journey for them, I thought it was great, particularly um, when, you know, it, it, was, it was beautifully done, beautifully done. Again, I wouldn't call it actually enemies to lovers, you, you couldn't probably make an argument, I wouldn't say you're entirely incorrect there, but I do think that the journey they went on is similar to that kind of a trope and it was excellently done. Jackson is a terrible character. That man, Grace might be head empty no thoughts, but Jackson, like, I, he just has, to me, like, I don't want to say no personality, but I do want to say, like, sir, we've seen, like, I see, I've read about so many Jacksons, like, when he had a brother who was, you know, here, and he could, you know, t swoop in and take the romantic lead, I was here for it. I was here for it. Hudson was interesting. Hudson was interesting in ways that Jackson just wished he could be. Um, he just was. He just was. So I think that's really everything that I have to say about the story. Oh, it's not. Homegirl Grace has this friend, Heather, who, like, 
occasionally pops in with a text message. And I think it's stupid. I, like, I'm happy that unlike Twilight, I guess, um, Grace had a connection to her previous life that she was forced to leave behind to go live in Alaska. But I also don't like side characters who don't add anything to this story and I don't see where Heather could. I'm not gonna make, you know, assumptions about where the story is gonna go in the next book, which I believe is called Covet. I have no fucking clue. Your guess is certainly as good as mine here. Um, it's kind of like when I was reading the Greenbone Saga and I'd finished Jade City and I was like, I don't know where we're going in Jade War. And then I read Jade War and I was like, I don't know where we're going in Jade Legacy. Um, that's kind of how I am about this series. Like, this was a cute little moment, but my head is empty, no thoughts about where Covet is going. So, I don't understand why we have Heather. She just, she doesn't, she's not, you know, a terribly important character. She's not always around, but she's around often enough for me to be like, okay, but are you going to do anything? Like, are you actually important to the story or are you just kind of here? So, with that, I have said everything that I need to say about these two books. Ultimately, I'm not uh, upset that I bought these. I, when I was reading Crave, I thought I was going to be, because again, it was just kind of average, and I was like, I could have got this from the library. But after reading Crush, I think that Crush really delivered on the messy vibes that I personally look for in my entertainment, and I was not let down. So, again, I do think they're great to get from the library, and I look forward to reading all of the thoughts you guys leave down in the comments if you've made it this far into the video make sure you leave this emoji down there with those thoughts because i'm sure there are plenty there are plenty to be had um and i'll see you guys soon with another video but until then and until next time bye